Okay. All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, Steve Minotonis of Katsu Global. And usually we have uh, retired Navy SEAL Captain John Doolittle uh, here. Uh, he's not here today, but we're going to do something very special today. Uh, today, we're actually, I'm going to show you how you can actually do katsu at your home, just doing regular things that we all normally do. Um, and you do them with the katsu bands on, either on your arms or your legs. We'll do a variety of things. We'll do everything from vacuuming to washing dishes, to folding clothes, to writing letters, to uh, typing emails. So what I first brought is your standard uh, luggage. I'll just put this down. And what I do in the morning, if I have to travel up to San Francisco, to New York, London, Tokyo, I put the bands on in the morning and I do my normal routine. It can be brushing my teeth. It can be doing anything, but I do them with my cots bands on. So as I have my cots bands on, before I head to the airport, I can be brushing my teeth. Now, you might ask, well, you're just working the right hand. Actually, I found with katsu, working the left, brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand is very, very good. You get actually very good at brushing your teeth with or combing your hair with the hand that you normally don't use. But as I'm actually working or, or preparing, packing my bag with katsu, I have the bands on. So by the time I get to the airport, and if it's a morning flight, um, I don't have time for a run, a swim or anything, but by the time I get to the airport, I've already not only done my workout, but I've also worked out and I feel refer refreshed. So I get in the airplane, I feel comfortable, I've worked out, I can close my eyes and, and have, a, have a nice flight, if that's possible in today's age. But other things you can do, and I'm gonna just pull out a few things here, water bottles, cleaner, you'll see how I do that. Towels, small towels, big towels, resistance bands, socks, squeeze balls. If you don't have squeeze balls, you can use tennis balls. Plates, uh, uh, sponges, chopsticks, and rice, or beans, paper, pen, bed sheets, and towels. And I'll go one by one while you put it on. But in the meantime, if all of you can put on your katsu armbands, and if you're not, sorry, even if you don't have all these tools, you could still actually mimic what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do and demonstrate is you can put the bands on your arms. So if everybody can put on their arms, pretend that you're sitting down at your desk and typing email. You can actually go through the cut cycle several times as you're checking your email in the morning or checking your text, whether you're on your phone or on your laptop or on your computer. You will find simple movement with your fingers and hands actually when you have the cut spans on is very, very good. You'll see, and I'll just move my hand here, I have much a darker hand. This is the band with the cut spans on. This is the band without. So you'll see all this engorgement in the limb. So even in those days when you're just so busy, you have to take the kids to school, uh, you have to do errands, you're going here and there, obviously out when we're not in the lockdown situation, uh, when you've just got so many things at work, so many things at the house, but you still have time to do things. This is when we put on the bands, either on our arms or legs, and go through the typical things that you would do anyway. You're going to eat. You're going to do a little bit of work. You're going to do movement. 
And these are the times we can put the cuts bands on. So whether you're typing emails or actually writing on a piece of paper, that's a great time to do katsu. The other thing that, that is really, really good, and I'll just demonstrate it with a small towel, when you have the bands on and you're folding clothes, something like a small towel here, as the bands are on, just roll up the towel. Just roll it up. It could be a bigger towel like this. And you can get the towel. The bigger, the better. And do your normal folding as the bands are on. And you'll find a, a complete uh, load of laundry is a very, very good workout. When you have things like socks and underwear, you can actually, after you've folded the socks or separated the socks, just a simple squeeze. So you're folding socks, you're, you're separating the underwear from the shirts, from the pants, etc. Every time you grab a small item, you can actually grab it, do 10 squeezes, do 10 squeezes. Not only are you, you uh, uh, getting your laundry folded, you're also getting a workout. Another uh, type of workout that I like, and it, this works the entire shoulder, the front of the check, uh, chest, and the back, is actually when you are washing your window, um, uh, cleaning the uh, table, wherever that is, and you Yeah, see, because they've completely blocked his farm. Oh, but is that, am I blocked? Because or is, there's a crane. You know, I'm sorry, let me, it's like I'm putting in sewers in there. Sorry, let me just unmute uh, somebody here. I don't know who it is. Can't see. I know, they do have sewers. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. So I can put my bands on, simply clean a table, clean a, a pane of glass, and around and around and around. You do this with the bands on, go clockwise, then go counterclockwise. Go forwards and back, forwards and back, forwards and back. As you do the uh, COTS cycle or COTS training, whichever you prefer. So simple things from brushing your teeth, typing emails, folding clothes, and you use the clothes as equipment. Just use the clothes as equipment. Be creative. And the hardest thing, one of the hardest things that I've ever done is actually vacuuming. The thicker the carpet, the better. Put the cots bands on your legs and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And you will feel your hips, your glutes, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your, your um, calves, all really, really working. Um, some of the other things you can do is if you don't have weights, and not everybody has small, light weights uh, at their house, you can always grab water bottles, a thermos, uh, and you use those as you go. Now, some people, they are watching television, uh, they're watching Netflix, uh, they're doing something where they're watching, and a lot of our most creative COTS users is as they're sitting down on their couch, they're simply, maybe during the commercials or some other time, they're actually doing something. You could not only do this motion, you can do this motion, you could do forward motion, you could do shoulder motion, you could pull up, you can push in and out, anything that you would like to do, including just static holes. So one thing you can do as you're watching television and they go through the commercials, for example, 30 seconds on, the next one rests. 30 seconds on, the next one rests. So with Katsu, we're able to really, really rethink the way 
that we exercise and we incorporate exercise or rehabilitation in our daily lives. So vacuuming, combing your hair, uh, putting on uh, makeup, packing for a business trip, packing for vacation, um, washing dishes. And the washing dishes part is very, very interesting. Not only it seems logical if you're using the bands on your arms as you're washing the dishes, very, very nice micro movements, but you can also put them on your legs as you're standing in front of the sink or putting the, the uh, plates in the dishwasher, down and up, down and up, or you're taking the dishes out of the uh, dishwasher and into your, your cupboards. Again, down and up, down and up. That's the same motion that we've been explaining over these last uh, few weeks about the non-lock quarter squats. Uh, if you're standing in front of your sink and washing your dishes, you can do your heel raises up and down, up and down. One of the other things that we do, and this is for uh, patients or, or clients that we have uh, who have had a stroke or some other accident. Uh, it could be a wounded warrior who's paraplegic or someone who got in a car accident whose limbs are now uh, disabled in some form. We ask them to get a simple pair of chopsticks, just a simple pair of chopsticks. And the first day, especially with our, our stroke victims, they may not even be able to hold the chopsticks. That's okay. What we do is we place the chopsticks in their hand and we assist them. Just that muscle memory is very good. We assist them. It doesn't take that long for them, and I don't know if you could see this, but I have very small pieces, uh, grains of rice here. And we literally ask the uh, patients to try to pick up one grain of rice and move it. Move it from left to right, right to left, left to right. And these micro movements with the COTS bands on has such significant improvement in their ability to move muscles or ligaments or tendons that have been damaged, it's incredible. If in the beginning, a grain of rice is too difficult for them to pick up and move, get something bigger, like a, like a bean. It could be a, a black bean, a pinto bean. It doesn't really matter. Left to right, right to left. When they can do that, we always want to have balance with katsu. So it could be your legs or your arms. You ask them to put the chopsticks in the other hand and actually try to utilize their non-dominant hand to move the uh, bean. Um, it could be something larger. Maybe you, uh, something that's easier is you have an orange or a tangerine and you peel off a certain section of the orange or tangerine. That's sometimes much easier to grab with uh, chopsticks. If, if there's no chopsticks in the house, a spoon, a knife, a fork, any, any utensil that forces the person to actually move it. And we recommend this even for people who are athletes, athletes like um, uh, a person who does judo, uh, a person who is a wrestler, uh, because their forearms have to be very developed, very strong. And if we ask them to work with uh, chopsticks and katsu, that combination makes all the small muscles of their arm very, very, not only do they have muscle control, but they actually are stronger than normal. So if I'm a wrestler and I need to grab somebody this way or this way or this way, I'm using different muscles in different ways to different degrees, depending on where I go. And with, cut, with your cots bands on, you can actually move. So chopsticks, toothbrush, water bottles, uh, regular household cleaner, um, uh, anything is used. Some of the more advanced things you can do is just a simple band. You could buy this band at a 99 cent store. You can purchase it. Uh, initially, 
the big one, the big long ones like this, because they're 99 cents, you can cut it in sections. You can stand on them and I'll just move this camera down. You can stand on it and pull up. You can go pull on it here, go side to side to work on your side, your hips. You can do many things with just a simple 99 uh, a cent piece of equipment. That piece of equipment can be moved in many ways. So you can take that piece of equipment, put it behind your back and just move this way. Not only this way, but you also want to move upwards and downwards. You can go one arm, left arm, one arm, left arm on your, on your legs. You just put them, step on it. For example, I'll move it here so you can see. Step on it, for example, put it up on your shoulder and move up and down, up and down. This actually gives more resistance. So the creativity that we've seen of people who use katsu is incredible. Um, some people are in a wheelchair, especially our wounded warriors, and they are stuck in a wheelchair. Um, we ask them to do very simple things. If, you're, if your legs are somehow compromised or uh, disabled in the beginning and they cannot stand up, we simply ask them to clench their muscles, clench your muscles. Um, gradually, when the muscle gets stronger, then we assist them getting up, of the, up from the chair. We could use one person be in front, a caregiver behind to move that person up. Gradually over time, and time can be two weeks, it can be two months, it can be literally two years, depending on the severity of the injury, we get that person to stand. We get that person who has been in a car accident or wounded in war, who have not used their arms, to at least be able to feed themselves. So there's a variety of things you can do in your home. And before we get into our workout, if anybody has a question, I'm going to unmute you all now and just raise your hand. Um, and I, you know, if you have a question, go ahead and ask. Ready, boys? First try. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 go ahead. Hi, my question is, uh, I, <clears throat> oh wait, I'm going to mute everybody and then actually, uh, let me, let me uh, get you, Len, let's see, Len, Len, Len. Okay, Len, go ahead. Okay, my question is, in doing all those things, when I've read the books, you're not supposed to keep it on your arms more than 15 minutes, your legs 20. Does that still apply to doing everything around the house and, and like jogging or walking or things like that? Does that still apply? Yes. So what, what we mean by 15 minutes on the arms and 20 minutes on the legs, uh, now I've had this on my arm for, for a while. It's not inflated and it's not tight. I just was using it for demonstration purposes. Right, I understand yeah. that. So, so in your case, if you're doing cuts cycles, so pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off, you've got a lot of off time. So that limitation for 15 or 20 minutes can be extended. When we're talking about 15 minutes or 20 minutes, it's the total amount of time under tension or under pressure. Like the training mode. Like the training mode. So if you're in the training mode, yes, to be safe, 15 minutes on the arms and 20 minutes on the legs is more than enough. If you're on the cycle mode, that total amount of time can be extended because you're only going 30 seconds on, pressure off. 30 seconds on, pressure off. And then it's stopping, you're putting the pressure on. Okay, so you could vacuum and all those things you said, and if it took more than took a half hour, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. If you're in the cycle mode. <laughs> right, in the cycle mode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And remember, we, we developed all these protocols at the University of Tokyo Hospital under the care of cardiologists. So between 2004 and 2014, what we did is we tested Katsu 
on cardiac rehab patients. So people generally between the ages of 50 and 75, some were a little older, some were a little younger, 700 of those patients every year for 10 years. So we had seven, a little over 7,000 people who had heart attack, stroke, heart bypass surgery that we did katsu on. The most vulnerable people with the most vulnerable part of their body doing katsu. And we learned that there was, because we were doing uh, MRIs, uh, blood tests, uh, we had um, uh, ultrasound going at the same time they were doing katsu, we learned what was the safe range. If it is in the safe range for someone who's had a heart attack, had a stroke, had a cardiac event of some sort, then most of us, and remember all those people were in all, had all kinds of medication. We learned over that 10 year period what our limitations of safety were. And so the 15 and 20 minute rule applied for those patients. And so we have applied it across the board for everybody else. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any, let me unmute everybody. Uh, anybody else have a question before we get into anything else? Uh, no, sorry, let me, yeah. Anybody have a question? Just go ahead. No, and that was it. a really good clarifying point because I didn't understand that before. So I think in future ones when you do it, because I thought just even my cycle mode, I was supposed to just do 15. So, yeah, no. It, for the cycle mode, you can extend it out. And in fact, in this cycle mode, because it's very gentle on the body, you can do it multiple times in the day. We have had wounded warriors who want to get back uh, with their their brothers in, in, on the battlefield. We have professional athletes, Olympic athletes, who want to get back into training as, as quickly as possible. They're doing cut cycle section sessions up to four times a day oh, when they okay. wake up in the morning let's say before lunch let's say mid-afternoon and evening and each of those individual sessions are yes, arms sir. and legs and they're going at it you know a half an hour to 45 minutes oh, really? so i thought it was great the, the cut Other than cycle my calf, I thought is, it was is very very simple a safe thing that you could do throughout the day now that being said we don't recommend anybody oh, no. does this for oh. hours on end. That, yeah. that is just too much. Yeah. Um, you don't need to. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> anybody else have questions? If not, we'll get into our, our workout. If you have uh, a dish towel, if you're in the, in the uh, uh, kitchen, if you have a pair of socks, if you just have some some kind of balls, uh, grab those. And we're going to start after you have your armbands on. We're just going to go nice and slowly for 30 seconds, opening and closing our hands. As uh, John Doolittle, our, our most uh, venerable uh, host, has taught us all, just very slow. I'm going to go for 30 seconds on, 20 seconds off. I'm going to time this right here. It would just go well, open, close, open, close. Uh, we've got uh, 10, 20 more seconds. In the beginning, when you do katsu, we recommend that you go slowly. In the same way that you will actually um, not, you don't, if you go out for a run in the morning or the afternoon, you don't put on your shoes and then go all out. You sort of you walk a little bit, you stretch a little bit, Okay, go ahead and stop. We'll rest for 20 seconds. You don't go right into your jogging and hit it hard. You sort of warm up in the same way that we warm up our muscles of our lower body or upper body. We also wanna warm up our capillaries and veins. So we start off gently. Okay, go ahead. We'll go for another 30 seconds. Open and close. Really get those fingers wide. You can move your uh, wrist any way you wish. If you have some kind of wrist pain or elbow pain and this aggravates it, we never, never advocate you feeling the pain of the exercise. So if my 
right hand hurts, I could just keep it open. If all I can do is open my fingers this way, that's fine. Okay, rest. So we don't want to aggravate whatever injury you may have or overuse uh, issue you may have. So if, instead of doing this on my hand that might aggravate my wrist or my elbow, I could just gently open my hands. Okay, go ahead for the last set. We'll go 30 seconds. Because the real key of katsu is actually engorging the lemon blood. That's the real key. That's the thing that begins the biochemical changes that happen in our body and it allows the, we call healing hormones, to get an attack here. We don't have to push it so it hurts. Okay, uh, we'll go into some bicep curls. Now, when you move the muscle like this, we'll go 30 seconds. When you move the muscle like this, we could go very slowly. Now, it depends. If I'm a 18-year-old boy or a 24-year-old uh, young man, I may want huge biceps. If I'm someone like uh, my mother or my wife, I don't want huge biceps. What I want is long, lean, toned muscle. So a young man who may want a muscle, the best way for him to do it is actually to contract the muscle yeah. and move slowly. Okay, rest. He can, oh, or yeah. he or she can contract the muscle and move slowly. That will actually um, build up lactate, waste product in the muscle. Yeah. Send, a, send a signal to the brain, and then the brain releases growth hormone that allows that muscle to, be, uh, to get bigger. Okay, go ahead. But if I'm my wife, if I'm my mother, who just wants a lean, toned look, you don't have to go hard. You don't have to build up that lactate. What you can do is just move the muscle regularly. Sometimes you wanna keep your hands open and just for a change of pace, move your, put your thumb up, move your hand in different directions as you're going. This will have, this will help all the muscle fibers in the body, okay, rest. The other thing that's also very good, and we've known this, when the muscle is engorged in blood, and this is really, really fascinating, when the muscle is engorged in blood, we are activating somewhere between 95 and 90 95 and 98 percent of all the muscle fibers in the body. Okay, we're going to do some tricep extensions. So, as the as the capillaries of your muscle is engorged in blood, right now, over 90% of your muscle fibers are being activated. We know in regular exercise, you could be lifting heavy weight, you could be doing something, and somewhere between 60 and 70% of those muscle fibers are being activated or used. And so, Katsu, with a lot of blood, okay, rest. With a lot of blood in your limb, enables that total muscle to be used much more effectively, much more efficiently. So you don't have to use heavy weight. You don't have to press hard. You could just move the muscle. And we know this to be true from very anecdotal things. Uh, go ahead. We'll do another 30 seconds. And that's when we work with the wounded warriors or the car accident survivors. When they're, they can't move an arm. They can't move a leg. But yet, we're, we're actually, when we have the quadriplegics, paraplegics, we actually take our hand and move the muscle for them. Even when we're moving their muscle for them, we see their muscles become lean, toned, uh, and, and useful, meaning that they can actually then go ahead and use it. So these are all little hints, depending on what you want your muscle to do, get bigger, if you're a young man trying to impress people or just someone who's older who just wants long, lean muscles, you can actually move your muscle in different ways. Again, if you want big, bulky muscles, slowly with contracting the muscles or just simple movement. And that's why when you do household chores with the bands on, washing dishes, washing a window, vacuuming, 
this simple movement is activating over 90% of the muscle fibers. Do we have any questions on that? Okay. okay, what we're going to do with, if you have a water bottle or two water bottles or light weights, grab those. Yoga teacher? Or train. And we're going to do some. He's going to take over the, uh, the workout sessions next week. Pardon me? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. This is yeah, Phil. So, yeah. Yes. Is there any advantage to doing the katsu bands with isometrics except when you're, you know, have a restricted motion or is it always better to have motion? Uh, no. Okay. Good. Very good question. So isometric meaning you're, you're holding stiff. You're just holding from a physiological perspective. That is exercise. That is it. So when I'm contracting a muscle like Arnold Schwarzenegger going like this, that muscle is contracted and internally, if we had a, a, a ultrasound, if we had a, a, a x-ray machine to look inside our body, that muscle just contracting, just holding is exercising. So when I mean by movement, this is easier for most people to do, but actually, you know, when we work with wrestlers, for example, and they're, they're learning different holds, we actually put the bands on and ask them to hold that that for 10, 15 seconds. So depending on what you do, if your child or you break a bone and you have a cast on, contract a muscle, isometric, release, contract a muscle. That is exercise. Now we, we generally define movement or exercise as moving, moving muscles or isometric or contracting the muscle. So you can do either depending on what you prefer. I, when I'm sitting on an airplane, flying I could put those bands on my arms or legs usually the person next to me thinks I'm a little strange but I put them on and I just contract the muscle I contract the muscle if I'm on the aisle or window seat I'll actually push down on the armrest if I'm the lucky guy in the middle row and my <laughs> seatmates allow me to use my hands on the uh, armrest I'll put both my, my hands down push down non-movement for five, 10 seconds, release, push down, release, push down, release. When I have the bands on, on my legs, same way, I'll kick my feet. So my legs are straight, push them upwards on the seat ahead of me. So it's not, I don't want to push the seat and bother the passenger ahead of me. But if I push up, it's a static hold. I hold my legs up for, you know, a few seconds or 10 seconds, release release hold and release so that isometric move isometric exercise are exercise that are great with katsu thank you phil anybody else has any questions steve this is laurel uh -huh. um my video got turned off but um i'm wondering this might be a silly question but is there such thing as as wearing the bands too much because if you can do household items, if you can do workouts, if you can do such a wide range of activities with them, at what point do you want to pause? Um, yeah, generally we say 15 to 20 minutes is, uh, is good. Um, uh, if you're doing it longer than 15 or 20 minutes, the, um, your band should be a little tighter. Okay. Your band should be a little, you should be physically exhausted Okay. or your muscles should be fatiguing literally between four and seven minutes. And that's for one specific exercise. That's for right? one. Well, that's for everything. The whole thing. I so mean, but you, when people do like the hour long workouts, that's okay. I'm th confused. That so when they do an hour long workout with Katsu, actually, mm -hmm. if they have the bands on properly, tightly. Mm -hmm. There's no human on this planet who can go for an hour with the bands on tight. Now, if you're doing okay. cut cycle, which is pressure on, pressure okay. off, okay. on pressure. Yes. Then as, as we discussed with Len a little bit uh, earlier, you can extend that time period Gotcha. Okay. from 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, because you don't, you're not under constant pressure. If you're okay. under constant pressure, there is a, a physical limit as to what you can do. Yeah. Now, what we like to do 
and what we like to teach people and encourage people to do, if your bands are optimally placed, you're only using them 10 to 15 minutes a day. And once you're in the uh, mindset of using your bands on a, on a regular day when you have so much work to do and you mm -hmm. can put them on while you're brushing your teeth or washing dishes, then great. You feel, you know, uh, physiologically, metabolically that you've worked out. Okay. Now, on those days where you have time, you can go to the gym, you could do yoga at your house, you know, you have time to go for a run or walk, by all means, take your time with Katsu. Gotcha. Katsu is a very efficient way, a very effective way in a short amount of time to get something in. So we always say, you have no excuse. If you have Katsu equipment, you have no excuse never to do exercise. You <laughs> always have an opportunity to do exercise, whatever that is. But again, we have a lot of pro athletes. They have been ingrained the longer, the better, the tougher, the better, the harder, the better. What we like to say is remember that fact that we are engorging the lemon blood. Therefore, the efficiency of using the muscle increases. So instead of only using 60 to 70% of the muscle, we can use 90 to 98% of the muscle. Any squat with, with katsu is much more efficient. So if I do 10 squats, at using only 60% of my muscle fibers versus 10 squats using 98% of my muscle fibers, you're doing a lot more work. And right. this is also very important. A lot of people like this. When your capillaries and veins expand, so with every heartbeat, dun, 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 dun. Every time your capillaries veins expand, this requires energy. And what is energy? You're burning calories. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if I have to expand my capillaries from here to here, it's using so much, so many calories. If I'm expanding my capillaries and veins to here, it's actually using more calories. Now, if you use that concept, I'm burning more calories with katsu. This is why a lot of people, and we could be doing squats if you wish, as we're talking, as if with your leg bands on, if you're burning more calories, you're exercising, we have a lot of users who say, I get hungry after katsu. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a young man, uh, he was a swimming coach from Santa Clarita, uh, just north of you, uh, Laurel. And um, he first did katsu and he called me up and he said, I love katsu. I had a great workout. I said, oh, very good, Chris. And he said, but Steve, I also hate katsu. And I said, why do you hate katsu? He said, because I just stopped in Krispy Kreme and I just ate six glazed donuts. I was so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, in some ways we were helping him. In other ways, we drove him to, to get something to eat. And we know with our, especially with our combative athletes, the boxers, the wrestlers, the MMA fighters, people who are, are, are uh, gymnasts, are, are divers, people who have to maintain weight to be competitive athletes. We always recommend 90 minutes after katsu, 90 minutes, just drink water oh. or tea. Interesting. Just drink water. Don't, because at that point, when you've expanded your capillaries and veins, it, re it takes some time for those capillaries and veins to go back to their normal elasticity. During that period of time, you are literally burning more calories hmm. as soon as you finish katsu for the next few hours. So if you want to maintain your weight or you want to lose weight, this is a perfect time not to eat, <laughs> not to eat. So katsu in a fasted state, is, it works very similarly. So with your capillary veins very elastic, even after you take off the bands, try not to eat. Try not to guzzle water. So uh, the human body in its normal state here, in about every 10 minutes, we, our body uses, absorbs about two, ounce, two fluid ounces of water. I don't know how many milliliters that is but two ounces are. So every 10 minutes, 
in ideal setting, you're drinking this much out of a normal water bottle. After 90 minutes, many people find those hunger pangs have decreased. Many people have found, oh, I thought I was hungry and now it's passed and by that time they're, they're back to work or they're picking up their kids or, or what have you. So if you wanna maintain weight or lose weight, try not to eat right after katsu. Try to uh, uh, discipline yourself to wait 90 minutes and we know this works because our, our athletes who have to maintain their weight for a, um, uh, for a, a competition of sort swear by this 90 minute rule with Katsu. Uh, why don't we put on our leg bands on? Steve, and, uh, yeah, do you couple. have any more questions? Yeah. Um, and, and I apologize if you mentioned this. I apologize to everyone because I'm, I'm doing two Zooms at the same time while I do my cycles. Uh, it's just um, one thing to, to note, and again, Steve, if you've already said this, to, to be aware that we're never doing any of these things with arms and legs on at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so if you're in the training mode, uh, it's just too much on the, on the, on the body. Uh, what really opened my eyes just for everyone is when you really start to realize and wrap your brain around, you can increase arm strength by doing katsu legs and you can increase leg strength by doing katsu arms just because it is systemic. So it's, uh, if you're washing dishes and, and, you know, you've got your armbands on doing, you know, small squats, you'll be, uh, working on your, on your, on your rear end. So it's really good stuff. Yeah. Okay, if you could put on your leg bands, and as uh, our uh, Navy SEAL Captain John Doolitt has always said, it's always, he puts them on. When the leg is nice and loose, when I'm standing, the girth of my leg is actually larger than when I'm sitting down or, re or relaxed. So you wanna put the bands on your legs and your arms when your body is relaxed. So I'm, I'm just gonna put on one, because if I put on two, I'm gonna start breathing hard. But I'm also gonna show you how to work on your core when you have your leg bands on. Very, very simple uh, things to do. And we've gone over this with John a few times, but some of you might have not have seen that. Uh, let's assume this is a book. Uh, I don't have a small book in front of me, but let's assume this is a book. And I put it on my head, and then I'll just put this down here so you can see. And I balance on one foot. Now, what I've found is a lot of women can do this for a long, long time. And a lot of men, especially those of us who are older, can't do this. So if you fall over, hold on to a wall, hold on to a chair in front of you, just something and you learn how to maintain your balance. If you do that, feel your stomach. It's actually tighter than normal. And the reason why is you're trying to maintain your stability. Now, if you are these women who have unbelievable balance, stand up with, stand up, put one leg band on, now grab two water bottles. And instead of using it symmetrically, so if I do this symmetrically, sorry, back up a little bit. If I do this symmetrically, these water bottles are, use, are acting as a balance. Like if I'm on a balance beam, I'm doing this. So what we recommend, instead of moving symmetrically, meaning this, in the same motion, the same time, now just move things asymmetrically <laughs> so you're moving it up down right like just diagonally anything you can do in a circle uh, back and forth so you're not having random motion and you do that and now your core from your neck to your groin is engorged even more that's one thing you can do so balance with either a book on your head if you have to hold on to something that's okay. You could be doing this in the cycle mode. So pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. If that is too easy, if you have a little bit of heavier weights or even kettlebells, use the kettlebells and then move 
move it this way. What you will feel is not only is the effect on your stomach, but you will feel that the leg that you're mm -hmm. balancing on is hard as a rock because all that pressure is there and you're trying to maintain. So oh, no. book on your head, but balancing with one it, foot. And then there's also something that yeah, a lot you. of people can do is you take a there's bozu that. ball and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it down here. You could be doing this while reading a book, while watching television. <laughs> just sit on a bozu ball with the bands on in the psycho mode and try to sit up very eloquently, like you're, t like you're in a job interview, or uh, somebody is, uh, you know, speaking to you. Uh, you're proposing to your fiance or something. You want to be very, uh, you want to have good posture, shoulders back, back straight, uh, eyes looking forward. But with the bozo ball, and you're sitting on it, you're you're creating instability. You, you can actually move around and do this. And we do this a lot, again, with uh, uh, people who have compromised issues on their legs. Of course, at that time, we're holding them so they don't fall over. But cut cycle on a boost ball, sitting. Ideally, if you had this and you were typing emails, writing a letter, watching television, uh, we actually did a very interesting experiment with morbidly obese people. It had to be over 400 pounds. And these people were very adverse to uh, exercise. So we asked them, what do you do all day? Ah, Laurel, can you do that again? That's very good. If everybody can oh, see gosh. Laurel, that was actually, it, as you're listening to me, why don't you watch Laurel? And I'm going to, uh, ah, okay. yes. what, 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 what you were just doing. So what she did is she put a book on her head and she was doing various movements. I mean, there is no way on earth I could do that, but she can. So what I would like to do is I'd like to build up to what Laurel is doing. I can't <laughs> do that now. So perhaps what I would do is simply look at her what she's doing, maybe hold on to something and try to try to do that. Over time, my musculature, my sense of balance will be improved. So all of these little things you can do at home. If you don't have a bozu ball, simply take a chair. Simply take a chair. When you have cuts on, sit up straight. Uh, don't slouch. This is not good. Simply, you know, if you have to write one email, if you have to do it for 30 seconds, uh, sit up straight. And this is actually what Dr. Sato, the inventor, did uh, to build up the core. What he would do, it was it, he would hold his breath for, you know, three or four seconds and tighten his diaphragm, tighten his core. Just tighten, release. Tighten, release. Tighten, release. He does this maybe 10 times in the course of the day. And because you're doing it with katsu, it's very, very good. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, so now we're gonna do our traditional exercises. Let's put the cuts bands on. We're gonna do some- uh, See you later, Steve. Okay, take care, thank you. We're gonna just go up on our toes. We're gonna do a set of, of uh, 30 seconds on. So just put the bands on your legs. I only have one. And it's not surprising to me. Yes, and we'll go up, we'll go start. We'll go up for 30 seconds and then rest. Up for 30 seconds, rest. If you wanna make it harder, what you do is you get up to the tip of your toes and just hold it for a few seconds and then down. Hold it for a few seconds and then down. Hold it for a few seconds and then down. The slower you go, the more difficult it will be. So we'll do 10 more seconds. Ideally, you hold it at the top for a second or two, come down, but don't allow the heel, okay, rest. Don't allow the heel to touch the ground. And we'll rest for a few more seconds. 
Okay, ready? Go. Up and down. Up, hold, slowly down. Up, hold, slowly down. Up, hold, slowly down. Judy, how does that feel? Very good. It oh. hits you quick. Yes, it does. The slower you go, the faster that lactate. Okay, go ahead and rest. The faster that lactate builds up, the more lactate you create, the stronger the signal is sent through the central nervous system up to your brain, and then the brain reacts to that stress. While we're doing this next one, if you have any um, words of wisdom on people who have plantar fasciitis, ah, okay. so many people have that. Yes, okay, ready, go. So what we like to do there um, for those people go ahead and continue I'll, I'll talk through this is it take a golf ball uh, take even a tennis ball if they don't have a golf ball and as they're doing the cut cycle either step on the golf ball and roll it on the foot or even with their hand okay if, if this were a golf ball okay go ahead and rest if this were a golf ball i would be moving it on the foot here was. as at or i'd be stepping on that golf ball and moving i think if we, we actually might have a podiatrist here uh no dr dr nelly is on, is not on today he he usually is on and uh he's a podiatrist who, who deals with this a lot he does katsu with him and his patients okay go ahead our last set and John? just no, moving no, that, that um, so golf I, ball. The, the right. harder, the better. A golf ball is better than a, 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 yeah. a, a like tennis ball. But if you do that, that's, uh, that's very good. I take the ball. Shadows. Ideally, if you live near the ocean or you have the ability to, to walk in a park uh, or sand, or if you don't do that, walk on two yoga mats, something very soft, with bare feet, that's also very good if their plantar fasciitis isn't so painful. Okay, rest. Very Steve, yes. I, have a, I have a comment on, on the plantar fasciitis, which uh -huh. is that a lot of times it can be trigger points in your calf. Okay. And so if you work out those trigger points in your calf, a lot of times it'll take care of the plantar fasciitis. Oh, okay, great, great. Is that, I don't see you, is that Chris Sickles? This is George, this is George. George. Okay, ah, I see George now, yeah. Yeah. We're just show as as we're doing us uh, so we'll do the next 30 seconds of squats just uh up and down george where would those trigger points be on the calf if you could show us no so does it depend on on it depends on the person i'll Got tell it. you what i will send you a, a a reference if you want to put it in the in the in the notes, notes. yeah I, i'll send you a reference of oh. things that of, of tri where the trigger points can be Okay, people thank, can work those out. Thank you, George. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. So again, with with the uh, squats, uh, just like the um, no, would you like glass water? What, just with the calves, the heel raises, now? nice and slow. We don't We're want about. to lock. We don't want to lock our knees. We want to keep constant movement. Uh, depending on how what muscles you want to work on, you can keep your uh, arms long workout today. across, you can bring you. your arms you up and down, right? depending on what is He's comfortable for you. Uh, Laurel, you have nice great form as normal. Uh, she's, in uh, my screen, she's down at the bottom right. Laurel, as, as, oh, hey, yeah, rest. Upstairs Laurel, as, I'll, be, I'll shut up, as you're doing <laughs> your squats, explain what you're doing. So, I'm gonna angle the screen down so you can see my oh, heels. You've got nice eyes. Okay. I'm keeping my heels rooted into the floor. I'm starting to shift my weight back so my knees don't pass over my ankles. I'm going all the way down, pausing for a minute at the bottom. And then as I come up nice and slowly, I don't fully lock out my knees. So I keep a little bend. And then I like to work the arms. So as I drop down, I reach, notice my heels stay rooted, and I rise up really slowly, pause. And if the arms is too much, you can just keep the hands in front of you. We down, pause, up, two, pause at the top, down, two, pause, check those knees, up, 
two at the top. And we keep going nice and slow. Thank you very much. If you don't start to pop up off the floor, that can mean that you have tight calves. So the recommendation to roll the calves is a really good one um, for anyone, not just if you have plantar fascia. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll rest for uh, 10 seconds. We'll do the last, last set of squats. Okay, ready, go. When I say stop, um, go into like a, a 45 degree angle, maybe like something like this. Okay, all right, stop. Just hold it there, just hold it. And now go just little movement, just like a few, few inches up, few inches down. And you should feel that burn on the side, on your glutes. Oh yeah. Feel that? So so at the end of the cuts, after you're doing your squats, as all explained, then at the end, what we like to do with the leg finisher, we call it, it's just little movement, just little movement, and you should really feel that burn. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. And depending on what part of the leg you want to develop, do it in different locations. You can do it in different locations. Just a little tiny movement to finish off the leg workout. Okay. And we'll finish up today with a little bit of jumping, jumping rope. I don't have a jump rope. So we're going to do what John is just exactly what Laurel is doing. So go ahead and Let's jump for 30 seconds. Pretend you have a, a jump rope and pretend that that rope is just going under your, the balls of your feet. 20 more seconds. Sounds like somebody has a jump rope. Okay, stop. Everybody, uh, next week, uh, Laurel, who's from uh, Venice Beach, California, will be leading us. Laurel Wave. Hi. And she's a relatively new COTS user, but she's a really experienced instructor in a variety of disciplines. Okay, let's jump for another 30 seconds. You can go left and right, as our Navy SEAL captain says, forward and aft or front and back. You can walk in place. If you have knee issues or hip issues and jumping is not something that is uh, easy on your body, just walk in place. High knees, low knees, it doesn't matter. Excellent, good job, Len. Asako-san, very good. All right, five more seconds. Three, two, one, great. Okay, last one, last one. We're gonna do one more 30 second uh, session on our legs. Okay, last 30 seconds. Ready, go. Ah, George, it's you going, that's good. I like the sound effect. <laughs> Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Thank you very much. If anybody anybody had additional questions, uh, I have another. Yeah, I have go ahead. one. Um, does katsu work if you have nerve damage? It works very well if you have nerve damage. I'll tell you why. Where, where is your, where is the damage? I, I had a skiing accident and I got paralyzed on my right side uh -huh. and they fused C4, C5, C6 together. Okay. And uh, 
this is about a year and a half, then the nerve grew back, but I've got what's called C5 palsy. Okay. Which leaves me, I have difficulty curling a 10 pound weight. Got it. When three years ago I used to do 40 or 45. Okay. So, <laughs> so in the body, the peripheral nerves are sitting right next to capillaries. When those capillaries expand, especially with katsu, that actually, and we don't know the mechanism how, but it actually somehow reinvigorates or maybe it, it, it bypasses the injured nerves. So we do mm -hmm. want to actually engorge the limb in blood, even with, we have some people who, especially the wounded warriors, who don't have a limb. Maybe they're missing a limb and they have phantom pain or other things. We still do it on the other three limbs. When, when the limb in, is engorged in blood, that, and, and let's, say, let's say this is the capillary that's sitting next to mm -hmm. this peripheral nerve, this actually engorges and it somehow pushes against or lengthens or modifies this peripheral nerve. And yeah. over time, yeah. in that the, the damaged nerves is somehow improved. We don't know the mechanism why, we just know the effects. So, so it does get the nerves to fire. Again. It does get them to fire in some way. We don't know e exactly the mechanism yet. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> just can't, you know. yeah. Thank you. And thank you, George, for that uh, advice on the uh, trigger points. All right, everybody. Thank you very, very much. And uh, we'll, uh, for those competitive athletes and you want to join us for today at three, we're going to go through a pretty, pretty hard workout with the, with the young kids. And uh, if not, we'll see you uh, Monday at the uh, uh, same time.